Hello, how are we all today? Today I would like to talk about Lesson 2, and of course this is Saxon, Course 2, Lesson 2. And most of what Lesson 2 is about are the properties of additions and um, multiplication. We're going to start out by a little vocabulary, which we always do. We need to know what inverse operation means. And basically, what inverse operation means, it is the process of undoing an operation. Okay. I'm just going to give a couple quick examples. If you add 4 plus 5 and you get 9, then you can also take 9 minus 5 and that will equal 4. Or you could take 9 minus 4 and that will equal 5. If you remember correctly, I talked about addition and subtraction being opposites. Multiplication can be handled in the same way. 6 times 5 equals 30. So, 30 divided by 5 equals 6. Or 30 divided by 6 equals 5. So that's just covering the whole idea of inverse operations. Now we have about four or five properties that we need to talk about quickly and you're probably already aware of them. The first one is the associative property. Of addition and multiplication. And what the associative property tells us that we can do is that we can regroup numbers. So example. Um, I'll write the word regroup just to remind you what it means. Okay, if you had the equation 2 plus 3 plus 1 equals 2 plus 3 plus 1. They're equal, right? They're the same thing. But the first one I group this way. So then the second one I can group this way. And of course we end up with 5 plus 1 and 2 plus 4 and we get 6 on both sides. So it's obvious that they're equal. Why would we use this? Most times we would use that if we had numbers that went, toge went together well like 7 and 3 and 6 and 4 and we wanted to, to add those up first. Okay. Another property that's pretty important that we use a lot is called the commutative property. And it is also for addition and multiplication. Okay. Now, the commutative property allows us to change the order. Change the order. So, if we had, uh, for example, 2 plus 3 plus 1. Now, if we wanted to add that a little differently, we could change it to 2 plus 1 plus 3. We can do it with multiplication as well. If we had 2 times 3 times 1, we could change it to 2 times 1 times 3. Remember, they only work for addition and multiplication. It does not work for subtraction, and it does not work for division. Okay, another property that we need to know is called the identity property of addition. Okay, and the identity property says that any number added to zero. will be that number.
A quick example of that, of course, would be something like this. 3 plus 0 equal 3. Here's your identity right there. Same thing with if you use a variable. Let's say you use n plus 0. That will equal n. There's your identity. Okay? Any questions about that? I don't think so. I think those are pretty straightforward. Okay, another identity property that we need to talk about is called the identity property of multiplication. Okay, and the identity property of multiplication basically says any number multiplied by 1 will be that number. Okay, so any number multiplied by 1 will be that number. All right, for example, 2 times 1 equals 2. 10 times 1 equals 10. X times 1 equals X. Not too tough. Pretty easy to, to get a hold on. The... All right, and we have one more property, and it's called the property of 0 in multiplication. And I bet you can guess what this one is all about. Basically says that any number multiplied by 0 will yield an answer of, yep, you got it, zero. Okay? So, we know how to look at that. We just take six times zero. Oh yeah, gosh, that's zero. N times zero, zero. One million, one hundred times zero equals zero. So that makes our properties complete. Now, We've dealt with the associative property, the community property, the identity property of addition, the identity property of multiplication, and the property of zero. You have all those in your notes. Now, one thing that this lesson does like to have us do is it likes to have us work out a problem or look at a problem and then give reasons for each step. Here is a problem, and I'll show you how we do this. Five plus... 27 plus 35. Okay, we're going to solve this expression and we're going to show the steps. So this first is just the given expression that we're given. Okay, then I don't like to try to add 27 and 35, so I would like this 35 maybe to try to add on to the 5. Makes it easier because 35 plus 5 is 40. So I'm going to change the order within these parentheses. Now, what property allows us to change the order in a problem? Yep, it is the commutative property. Okay, so that's the reason for this step. I can change the order of these numbers. Now I want to change the grouping. I want to get this 5 and this 35 together. So I'm going to write 5 plus 35 plus 27. For what property tells me I can do that? That's right. It is the associative property. I can reassociate the numbers. I can change where they are grouped together. Now all I have to do is add these two numbers and I'm going to get 40 plus 27. And that's just simply the reason how I can do that is just simple addition. And again, now I have a much better, much easier way to add these because 40 plus 27, I can do in my head. And that has to be 67. And of course, that was also addition. 
Well, thank you for listening to me today, and I hope this helps you. If you have any problems, please be sure to ask questions in class.